When you take a look at a lot of budget versus actuals charts in Power BI, they're going to look something like this, pretty standard stuff. But we can ease off the cognitive load from this chart and add a bit of flair to it and make it look like this. Or even better, make it look like this this. Let's just take a look at how do we build these two kind of budget versus actual visualizations in Power BI. Let's go. All right, my first option is this chart, which is where the sales is presented by the blue rectangle right here. Anything which is above that, which is nothing but the budgets, uh, leaves an empty area and you can see that this is the target which is not met. In case the sales which is exceeding the rectangle right here, which is uh, the rectangle in gray, you can see that we have a surplus sale right here. So as soon as you see the empty areas, you can quickly understand that this is the targets not met. Now, if you take a look at the data, my data is very, very simple. I just have the category column, the actuals column, and the budgets column, and that's the data that I'm working with. Sure enough, in your case, the data can be a bit complicated as well, but to demonstrate the two cases that I have, this data is just fine for now. So I'm gonna go back here. To be able to build a chart like this, we need three techniques to understand. One is the overlapping technique. The first thing is that, obviously, you can see that we have two measures in our chart. The first one is going to be a sales, and the second one is going to be a budget budgets measure. And both these measures are going to create two bars. So one is going to be this bar and the second one is going to be the taller bar like this. The overlapping technique is going to teach you that how these bars will overlap one another and create a single bar like this. That's part one. Part number two is that we need to learn that how do you make a bar transparent. So you can see that you can actually literally see through the bar because that's empty right here. That's the transparency technique. And finally, a bit of formatting and everything is going to land you a chart like this. Let's just start with a blank canvas and start to make our chart. I'm going to right click and I'm going to make a new visual. And I'm going to make uh, this particular visual, which is a clustered column chart. Once I make this visual on the X axis, I'm going to add the category. Where are you? Right here. And then in the bars, I am going to add my actuals and budgets measures, which are the sum of the two columns. So in the Y axis right here, I'll click on the actual. And then I'm also going to click on the budgets. And that is nothing but my chart. Let's just format this chart a bit. So I'm going to click on the ellipsis right here and say that my chart is going to be sorted by the category. And I'm also going to say that this is going to be sorted in the ascending order. Howsoever you want it, you can sort the chart. But for now, I'm sorting it by the category. Now, once you have the chart, I would like the, these two bars to overlap one another. So how do we overlap the bars and not just have them, you know, kind of be adjacent to one another? So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the chart and go over to the format pane right here. In the format pane, we have something called as columns, which are nothing but the two columns right here. I'm going to pick up the series all. I want to take a look at all of them. And then in the layout, you can see that we have something called as an overlap, which is at the moment turned off, which I'm going to turn it on. And nothing really happens to the chart, by the way. Now, what we have to do is we have to uh, kind of re reduce or remove the space between the series. What exactly is a series? So this is a series. This is a series of data. This is a series of data. This is a series of data. So on and so forth. So we have to reduce or remove the space between that. So I'm going to say that the space between the series is going to be like completely none, like 100%. And the bars have become like really fat, although they have overlapped one another, but they have gotten really fat. And I'm going to increase the space between the categories. So this is, let's say, the first category, the second category, so on and so forth. So the way that I do that is that I increase that 20% to, let's say, 50%, and the bars are more manageable in size. Now, once you have that, you can see that if, let's say, D is on top of the blue, which is the actuals, it completely opaques it out. You can't really see the back value. So next comes the transparency technique as to how do we make the bar transparent and take a look at the other value as well. Next up is transparency, and I'm just going to select a chart, go over to the format, and again in the columns, I am going to now start to make individual series transparent. So let's just go ahead and pick up our actuals, and the actual is going to be in this particular color, and I've already picked up the color for that. I'm just going to click right here. That's my actual. And my budget is going to be in the white color, which is right here. Now, obviously, the white is kind of completely opaquing that uh, the actual is right here. But I'm going to say that this is going to be 100% transparent. Now, because that is 100 transparent, obviously, that is not going to be visible. So the way that we are going to be uh, able to make that visible is by adding the border to the budget. So if I just maybe click on the borders right here, you can see that the budget starts to appear right here and the chart looks good. Finally, formatting, if you just format the chart a bit, remove the axis right here in case you don't need it, the grid lines that were there, you can remove all of that. 
We are also having a very customized title. This is nothing but just a text box. Sales is written in the color that represents the sales and budget is nothing but this particular bar. Now, because we have chosen the color in the title, it's very, very clear. And the title itself is acting like a legend. And just add the data labels. I have just added the data labels for the uh, actual values. If I add the budgets as well, it's going to be a bit too cluttered, but that's what I have at the moment. In fact, what I could have done, which I did not do, was that I could have also chosen a very dark blue color for the bars as well just to make sure that this color jives with this particular color and nobody is able to confuse that this number belongs to the sales or to the budgets and people are able to take a look at sales versus budgets nicely moving on to option number two if you want to add more flair more interesting approach to this particular chart what we can do is we can color the empty portion of the chart in red to highlight that that is going to be the missed target anything which is popping off in the blue color going above the target is going to be our surplus or overachieved and that can be highlighted by the blue and the targets can be just a straight line and that is going to show you that what the target was and that is going to make a very interesting and very impactful chart let's just see how can to build a chart like this if you're enjoying the video thus far it's very likely that you're going to also enjoy my courses on power bi especially the hard parts of power bi dax data modeling power query and the m language i talk about these concepts in a structured way start right from the scratch talk about the basics and everything and then graduate the learners from the basics to more advanced and essentially i talk about a lot of thinking concepts as to how do you structure the problem and solve your own data problems as well hundreds and thousands of students have joined my courses and left a raving feedback. If you're interested to take your Power BI journey to the next level with me, I'd highly recommend that you take a look at the courses and you shall benefit a lot. The link for the courses is down in the description of the video. Let's get back to drawing some charts. All right, before we go ahead and start to build that chart, which is where we highlight the missed portion or highlight the surplus amount that we have achieved over the budgets, it's very important to understand the logic as to how are we going to build it. So I'm going to take you through a small presentation that I have made. It's not really a deck. It's just like a mock-up of the chart. And you will see that what essential ingredients do we need to be able to put the chart together. So here I am in a small slide right here. So you can see that the first thing that we would need is we would need this particular bar, which is going to be the surplus bar as to how much extra have we achieved. That's one calculation that we need to make. Then in case we are into a deficit and we have not really met our budgets, then how much is a deficit? So this is the unmet portion is that we would need. So this is our second ingredient. Then we would also need what is our budget. So this is our budget right here and this is our budget right here. This is going to be presented by a state dash line. And the final thing that we would also need is we would need the supporting bar, which is on top of which this particular bar is going to stand and on top of which this particular bar is going to stand whether unmet or met now what exactly is the calculation or what exactly is the logic for this particular bar if you think about it for this entire bar think about it that our sales was let's say 100 and our target was let's say 80 which is this particular line right here now the least of the two 100 or 80 is going to be the supporting bar right here and that is going to be the logic in power bi as well take a look at this one as well so let's just say that our uh, target is 80 which is nothing but this particular line and our sales is let's say 50 then the least of the two 80 and 50 the same logic is going to be this particular bar so the height of this bar is going to be 50 so once we actually draw this particular logic on top of this bar the supporting bar we can place the surplus bar or the unmet bar and the target is just the target line and once we have these four essential ingredients with us the supporting bar the met the unmet and the target we will be able to make a chart let's just jump over to power bi do some calculations create these components and let's just start to make the chart all right fellas back in our favorite place power bi and i've written a bunch of measures let me show you those measures so i am going to show you the first measure which is nothing but the supporting bar which was just the gray bar on top of which either you would have the met bar on the unmet bar and you can see that i have just written very simple logic that hey whatever is the least of the actual or budget and that is going to define what the bar is going to be and if you take a look at the met bar the logic is very very simple just take the marker value uh, whatever that is and minus the bar you are actually going to get whatever surplus you have on top of the bar similarly is going to be the unmet bar where is that right here the logic slightly shifts because we are trying to calculate the deficit and that's the logic the measures are very very simple you can just take a look at it 
and the final one is nothing but the target which is going to be the straight line and that is going to be nothing but the budget value that we have now once we have this particular data with us let's just start to make the chart so i'm going to start to make the chart right from scratch let's just kind of go ahead on the entry screen and just create a visual this time the visual that i am going to build is nothing but this particular visual which is where not only do i get to stack the values but i also get the line chart you will see that why do we need a line chart but that's the chart that i build which is a line and stacked column chart once we have this particular chart on the x-axis obviously we will have the category and i put that now in the y-axis i'm going to maybe have the supporting bars first because on top of the supporting bars are the unmet or the met bars so supporting bar is nothing but the bar on top of that we will have the met and on top of that we will have the unmet so we can have either of the two we can have met or we can have unmet and that's my chart now we can add that little dash line right here so this is the dash and this is the dash whatever that was so i'm going to click on the chart right here and in the line y axis i'm going to create that particular dash so i'm going to maybe go ahead and say total target is going to be my line but hey i don't need the line i need a dash so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start to format this a bit. Click on the chart, go to the format. In the format, you're going to go over, roll down to lines options right here. And I'm going to say that at the moment, the uh, width of the line is three. I just don't want it. So I can just maybe turn that off to zero and the line disappears. Good. But I still want that marker. So I would go ahead in the markers and turn that on right here. And the markers start to show up. And once the markers start to show up, I can just go ahead and say that, hey, these markers are go not going to be a dot but they are instead going to be a line and that's the line and i can just increase the density of the line from five points to let's say 10 points and they become more visible now obviously we will have to format the chart so i can just go ahead and just do a bit of formatting just to kind of give you an understanding that how the chart is coming together so in the columns right here in the columns i'm going to say hey the bar is going to be in a gray color and that's my gray bar and the blue is going to be, let's say the, the purple is going to be the blue. So on the met bar is going to be this shade of blue. I've already done that. And the unmet bar is going to be a shade of red. Let's just pick up this particular red. And that is my chart that I have made. Now, once you make the final chart, obviously you would also want to take a look at the labels on the chart and you would want to read the chart. Just having the blue and the red bars is not going to be enough. People would want to read the numbers of the chart as well. Now, if I start to add data labels on top of this chart and on top of this chart, it's going to get very, very cluttered because there are three things here. There is obviously the target. There is going to be an unmet. In case you want to show this value as well, there is something on this value as well. So what I've done is I've created a tooltip and if I just hover on top of this chart to reduce the busyness of the chart the tooltip actually shows me that the sales was 10 the target was 19 which is right here and the deficit is 9 and these are just custom legends that I have made these are just rectangles that I have made which kind of present what the legend is it just gives me the flexibility to design the legends the way that I want it and that is convenient and that's about it. And if you don't know how to make a tooltip, I just made a tooltip. I'm gonna leave a link to a video from Reed Havens. And then he has taught a, a technique where you can have these hovering tooltips. That's a brilliant technique. I'm gonna leave a link and you can just do that. By the way, the tooltips are right here. So on the new page, I have these tooltips right here. And there is a measure which I have written to calculate the tooltip. You can also take a look at that. There's a bit of formatting going on in this particular measure. I'm sure you can download the file. Just get behind this and you can take a look at it. But once the chart is completed, the chart is going to look like this. And this will probably impress the users a lot. Yeah.